Hi guys, and welcome to the video. Welcome to Newquay in the southwest of the UK, and welcome to this beauty here. This is the Just Flight Piper PA28R Turbo Arrow 3 slash 4, uh, which is quite a mouthful. And it's going to be the subject of today's video for the next 10-15 minutes or so. And what we're going to do in the time-honoured fashion, we'll have a look at the outside, the inside, take it for a flight and see what we think. Come up with some sort of conclusion at the end. So let's bring across the web page and have a quick look here. So obviously uh, it's Just Flight um, on the Just Flight web page. It's on their store uh, and it gives us a couple of bits of information. The first thing is uh, £30.49 and pence sterling is the price. Um, so I'd imagine that's somewhere in the region 35 to 40 US dollars or, uh, or euros. Um, but in terms of the price bracketing, uh, it's not the most expensive. It's also not the cheapest. Um, however, I think personally, uh, spoiler alert, it is quite good value for what you get. Um, it's a very nice aircraft, particularly to hand fly. Um, but we'll come on to that a bit later. But as you can see on the web page, there's an awful lot of information about it uh, where they tell you all the good stuff. Um, we'll have a look at it. The tablet, for example, um, there's a couple of little bugs here, there and everywhere. It's to be expected these days with complexity of add-ons, um, but I think this one's really pretty good. Liveries included. There's five liveries for each of the models, uh, three and four. Um, and the difference between the two of them is, if it comes through the video, is the T-tail. So let's just hover here. It'll stop it moving through. The 3 is, has got a traditional uh, stabiliser at the back and the 4 has got this high T-tail um, which is very distinctive and it does have a huge effect on handling characteristics of the aircraft. Let's see if we've got a better picture of it. Here we go. And the reason being is that the T-tail, unlike a normal uh, tail at the back or a low set tail, the T-tail is out of the effect of the propeller slipstream. So uh, the key difference is that when you have uh, low speed, controls go all soggy and floppy. Um, when you have low speed but high power, the slipstream from the prop goes back and on a normal t uh, tail it will go over the tail. So you'll still have relatively good elevator control at slow speed. Not so much with the T-tail because it's up high and out of the, uh, the props, uh, prop stream. So when this is slow with high power, it'll behave exactly the same as if it's slow with low power, not the same as a, a low wing uh, or a low set tail. But we'll have a look at that when we fly it. Talking of which, let's have a look at our beast and uh, have a look at the outside. So from the outset, she's a very pretty aircraft. Um, I quite like the PA-28s. So they're a very stable aircraft to fly. Um, and I think most pilots who've gone through GA in some way, shape or form will have flown one of these. In terms of the outside modelling, um, it's got the uh, newer wing, so it hasn't got the solid Hershey bar, um, which the earlier ones had. Uh, as I say, it's a complex aircraft, uh, or that's what it's considered it as in the UK, because it's got a wobbly prop, so it's got a variable pitch prop, um, or sorry, constant bit speed prop uh, and retractable gear. Uh, if you add the possible possibility of another engine, uh, so you get a Seneca or a Seminole, uh, then you'd have a... Uh, f aircraft fully capable of doing a multi-engine instrument rating with the appropriate avionics. Um, but for private pilots, um, this is generally the sort of level that they want to get to. Um, and this is a very good representation of a very common aircraft. And from the outset, the 3D modelling on the exterior is very nicely done. You can see we've got a lot of uh, good shaping and formation around here, around the curves, uh, around the fuselage. Around the windscreen you can see with the reflections really good set of reflections uh, the pbr texturing so we've got very high gloss um, can uh, engine covers here uh, sort of metallic spinner slightly matte prop very nicely shaped the 3d modeling is done to a very high standard you can see if you go right in you just start to get some squaring off but that's to be expected but overall i think the 3d modeling is a very good now, say as a model, she's, uh, she looks very good. There's a few areas where you can see, uh, for example, where they've done the engine on the inside of the cowling, uh, and you can see the undercarriage has been done to a very nice standard. Uh, there's a couple of areas where the textures are a bit... Uh, I'm not quite convinced. It's more clear what I'm on about with the uh, main wheels. This texture here it doesn't really do much for me. But overall, the modelling, the texturing, the shaping, uh, the painting, etc., all looks very good. 
It obviously comes with tie downs etc uh, which you can operate from the uh, EFB, the latest must have item on any add-on and as you can see the actual creation of the model itself has been done to a very nice standard. So as you look down the wing you can see the rippling effect over the top, very nicely done coming around to the tail. It's, it's typical Piper to be honest um, but things like the joints where the fuselage and the uh, the tail root are very nicely done. I will highlight the textures are generally 2D so this is not uh, 3D rivets, 2D and the textures do get a little bit vague as you get really close in um, but I am being nitpicky here because generally with GA you're going to sit at it from about this distance to have a look in and uh, it's very nicely done. It gives the uh, real good, really good impression of what the real aircraft's like. Um, so static wicks all present and correct, uh, linkage for the tail up there look all very nicely done. So external uh, visuals and modelling, as I say, done to a pretty high standard for my liking. Uh, the non-slip uh, matte walkway, very nice. The rather unique uh, Piper door with the door catch at the top and uh, sort of the door handle, the car door handle almost. Um, but overall done to a very nice standard. Popping inside to have a look at the modelling in here and I'll be honest, I think this is done really well. Um, there's no obvious areas where you go, oh, that's awful. Uh, there's a couple of bits where um, the the texturing really does shine. Uh, one of such one such bit is on the combing here, for example, with the sort of leatherette and stitching, really nicely done. Areas where sometimes you see issues are areas down here where you've got multiple uh, 3D modelling components coming together, all done very nicely. Uh, there are not everything is clickable. But as you hear, there's good noises, uh, cuts the ambient noise very nicely. Look over the wing, looks beautiful from here. Queen Piper, really happy. Very uh, 1970s decor, sort of uh, puce velour bleh, interior. Uh, corduroy headdress, not my cup of tea. And I've slown the speed down because of being outside. Slow, slow, slow. But you can have a look at the in, uh, inside here with the uh, the cabin and uh, I'll be honest I, I never bother with cabins really that much um, so there's a lot of things that aren't clickable so ashtrays for example uh, you've got the registration plate down here it's nice to see that they do it individually for each aircraft but uh, the overall modeling of the 3d panel you can do the usual things get rid of the yokes I will pop that one back for the EFB um, but you can see that as well the animations are nice and smooth so we don't get that thing where Microsoft Flight Simulator you move, you move your control and it does that suddenly. This is nice and smooth and infinitely controllable which is great. Likewise um, X-Plane has always been renowned for fluid and uh, good uh, movement and dynamic movement in things like needles. Uh, this is no exception. Comes with a choice of naviga navigational aids. Uh, this is the GNS 530, which I tend to use. It's quite a simple bit of kit to use, to be honest, um, and it's been present in, in quite a few of the uh, aircraft that I flew in the GA world. Uh, it's steam gauge with a lot of other stuff, so those who are uh, flying old beauties like this these days will recognise a lot of the old uh, avionics. Um, and it's it, you know if it works it works um, you have to just uh, learn how to use the kit you've got available to you talking of which is a very basic attitude indicator and directional indicator or directional gyro I should say um, this needs to be set by hand um, I don't know if you can change it in the options of x-plane um, but it's no biggie for me um, but the instruments are all readable clear nicely done Again, 3D modelling to a high stand. You can see here where it's uh, recessed into the uh, the panel itself with the screws, etc. Uh, nice. You'll notice the textures on these two knobs are completely different on the top. It would have been very easy to just copy it over, but they didn't, which is nice. It shows that they're paying attention to uh, detail and making it as good as they can. All very positive. So let's have a look at the... Uh, sort of jewel in the crown over here this is the EFB if you click on the bottom it goes to your pilot side if you click on the bottom again come on it goes to the co-pilot side or the uh, right hand seat click it again it goes up there click it again it comes back around here so you can position it wherever you like if you 
which side is that side if you click on the left hand side it pops out I do like a pop out uh, that's one of my favorite things is a pop out you've got to have a good pop out in your life the pop out for the um, electronic flight bag really good um, it's basic I'll be honest it's not there's no frills with this but it is basic but it does exactly what it says on the tin so aircraft options you've got all the stuff here now one of the one of my uh, little bug bears this is I don't know if this is a bug or whatever it is the cockpit light switch is permanently on you can't turn it off until such time as you have power to the aircraft which seems really weird to me don't know why that is um, obviously at night it means that you you end up going into a lit cockpit so it has a benefit um, but for me I just don't understand that one there um, but as you can see you can swap pilots left to right um, you can choose your uh, units for measurement your tie downs etc so we'll get rid of all of those click 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 um, we'll leave that in millibars we can't change that um, instrument reflection for window reflections etc and you can open the doors nice sounds associated with them as you can see let's just get rid of this moment Doosh. Um, standard fair piper card type door baggage bay is up um, it's, all, it's all really nice stuff obviously you've got the two locks that you get with piper doors and then in terms of closing it you can use your mouse wheel so it's it's uh, in very infinitely adjustable a nice thunk ashtrays aren't uh, aren't interactive you drag and pull to close that one just click for that one doors nicely shut um, so yeah all told the interior is really nice um, and with the EFB it becomes very usable um, so cabin door, pilot window, baggage door, window reflections, you can see them as I click them on and off. I must admit I leave them off, I'm not a massive fan of them. And instrument reflections, um, I leave them off because, uh, well, just I do. It's, it's what, it, what I am. Going back, you've got weight and balance. Um, now this for me is something that could be better. Uh, so it, it's not that clear how it works. Um, but if you click where the numbers are, you can add passengers and you see that uh, we've got that. And then if the fuel, um, you can set your fuel. I'm going to just set it to half, but you can set your fuel. Um, and you can also put baggage in the back. And you use your mouse wheel to change it. So we'll put 50 litres in each side. Um, and then you've got your CFG. So if I were to stick that that um, full there and uh, full fuel, we exceed our CFG, as you can see here. So we'll go back to half tanks, get rid of you, get rid of you and get rid of you and we're well within our operating constraints um, so this is a really useful chart so that you uh, have the numbers down here you also have your graphical representation really like that and then when you've configured everything you can save it or load it uh, to your wishes instrument options this is where you can change your uh, settings in terms of GNS you can have various pop-ups and or the GTN 750-650 3D integration. Um, I, I think it's going to be the Reality XP GTN, uh, which is what I've got, although I haven't got it installed at the moment. Engines, this is very basic uh, in terms of uh, handling your engines. Uh, it gives you your fuel, your imbalance, and then you can refill various things here. It'll give you an indication as to how the engine is performing. Recharge your battery if you wish. And then you can simulate spark plug fouling and vapor lock. Although in previous um, aircraft, I've sometimes found that to be a little bit too aggressive. Static liveries, you can change whether or not you have a dirty or a clean livery. Ooh, uh, misses. Configuration. Um, this is a nice one, Dynafil intensity. So obviously they've gone down a route of having Dynafil to try and increase the sort of interactive nature of the aircraft, how it behaves, how it handles. Um, and it does a very nice job. I haven't had a need to move it from here. Um, but very very nice the only thing I've changed is auto fuel switching because I'm lazy uh, logbook if you want to record everything checklist I won't bother with that today um, ground handling should you wish to do any ground handling although being a PA28 you don't generally need to do that much dynamic liveries this for me is a, it's not something that I would use personally uh, but I can see the benefit of it if you have an aircraft that you want to try and match the livery to that you fly in real life for example Basically, what you can do is with your mouse scroll wheel, you can change uh, the intensity of various hues within it. And then you can change which bit of the aircraft you want to affect. Um, so Piper logo, for example, uh, let's make it pure red. 
we'll bring this all the way down we will bring this all the way down and so on and so forth so you get the idea so you can change it to whatever you wish um, which is really quite nice uh, then obviously go previous apply or next um, I'm just going to leave it as it is because I'm going to use the built-in liveries and then the flight computer various bits as you go through your flight all very nicely done we've got rid of our stuff so what we're going to do is start her up and get her airborne so I'm not going to as I say I'm not going to bother using the checklist so what I'll do is I'll get rid of that I'll get rid of that We'll have a look, make sure we've got everything as we would expect to see. Ah, we'll mention this down here. This is the Century Autopilot. It's a very, very basic autopilot. So what you've got is autopilot on off. You can roll the aircraft left and right by turning it to left and right. Uh, this is to engage heading hold. And in doing so, it engages this, where you've got the choice of heading, uh, omnidirectional, um, which is basically your beacons, and then nav, which is following your uh complex kit up here whatever it may be um, and then to the right uh, we're slightly obscured um, but it's got localizer based to the nav aid and localizer uh, localizer normal and localizer uh, back course or reverse localizer not an approach technique that's used very often these days um, but it is available to you here i've not actually tried it nav one nav two switch down here should you need to use it and the fuel are fuel is here so we'll just turn some fuel on so that we can start the engines and then it's pretty standard piper throughout the rest of this as i say we'll just get this thing fired up as soon as i turn the battery on um, i can then go over here and i can go click and turn the cockpit lights off and then i'm actually going to get rid of this uh, there we go. So, with the battery on, uh, we're going to stick the alternator on. It doesn't make any difference at the moment. Um, you've got your lights in standard Piper Fair, left and right. We'll try not to uh, destroy the battery before we get going. EGT down here. Um, the red needle isn't a limit. Basically, what you do is when you get to your peak EGT, you can set the red so that in future you know what your uh, max EGT is. Um, there's no rocket science involved in that. Um, it's a pretty basic aircraft. You can bind separate controls. So that's the mixture, that's the prop. We'll make sure the prop's fully forward. And the throttle, we will crack that slightly. Fuel's on, that's cracked. Uh, so pop, pop some anti collision lights on and uh, let's get ourselves started. So douche, douche, douche. And then. Well, that started quite easily and you can see the uh, direction indicator the DI moved uh, immediately but it's not actually in line with where we are we are let me just scoot us over a bit we are on what one or about one six zero so let's just set this to one six zero other one you fool We'll just let the engine warm up whilst we're doing this and then that will do us for the moment and as it warms up let's have a look make sure we've got all the t's and p's as we would want them so other things we can do now is we can turn on our avionics so, so let's turn these on then so there's my transponder on 7000 uh, we'll squawk altitude and conspicuity uh, we've got a little switch down here for the DME, so we'll turn that on. We'll turn the uh, COM and NAV radio on. There we go, so that's all on. This is on antenna, and now we just need to switch this bad boy on. It's very dim, very dark. Can we increase the brightness? That's the volume. How do we increase the brightness in this thing? Not entirely sure, that's quite dim isn't it? Never mind. So what I'll do is I'll pop a route in here whilst it warms up and then uh, I will get back to you. So just while she's warming up I've put a route in. Um, it's a very basic route, we're probably not going to fly it because we're more interested in the aircraft than uh, the default uh, GPS. 
um, but I will bring this over this is one of my things that I'm really keen on with add-ons uh, it's the documentation um, there's three main documents that come with the aircraft so there's the manual uh, there's the performance manual and then there's the EFB uh, information um, and what I will say is that it's a very good manual it's very well written it's very well presented uh, the index helps out massively and it's got a lot of information that if you're not familiar to flying general aviation uh, it will basically give you a lot of instruction information and one of the things I really do like is further down here once we get past all of this once I say once we get past all of this this is what I mean there's a lot of information in here um, eventually we get to checklists ground equipment blah 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 a tutorial flight basically uh, is it easier to see it here uh, normal procedures where's it gone tutorial flight flying the turbo arrow is this it fly the turbo arrow tutorial flight um, which basically it's really good for getting you set up in how to uh, fly the aircraft uh, really good for which uh, they are to be applauded as I say like all good general aviation aircraft has its performance charts um, something that becomes the pain of your life if you're doing your uh, ATPLs, uh, your exams. Uh, but high, very important information though to be fair and I've used it in the real world where uh, I was flying into Fenland with an aircraft that uh, was a bit mm, maybe maybe not um, and the performance tables did help me out because uh, I managed to figure out what I was supposed to be doing. But EFB tells you all about it there. So three very straightforward, very easy to follow uh, pieces of documentation uh, that come with the aircraft. So what we'll do is we'll start to taxi out. Let's take the RPMs down before we take the brakes off. And X-Plane I absolutely love because it's got brakes like the real thing, i.e. you press the brakes, they come off. And for me, that is just golden. Right. Um, the first thing I'm going to highlight is ground handling, uh, what it's like in terms of ground handling. So this is St Morgan, um, sorry this is Land's End, is it Land's End? Newquay. I'm going mad here, what's going on with me? Uh, this is Newquay, um, it's got quite a number of uh, closed runways, it's an old RAF base, um, it's still got an RAF presence, uh, RAF St Morgan, but um, fundamentally uh, it's more uh, it's got an airport, combined airport and uh, military aviation uh, facility basically now. But I don't think the military fly out of here that much. Um, but in terms of ground handling, um, it's very responsive. As you can see, I'm using very little input. Responds very quickly. You take the power off, it will start to slow down. And I have no doubt that you could probably... Uh, probably find very little wrong with it. In terms of the uh, brakes, standard brakes, uh, behaviour of the model, it nods the, uh, nods the head down and then it bounces a bit as it dumps itself out. Um, but very nice all told. So what I'll do is I'll taxi to the uh, threshold and I'll see you there. Right, so we're down at the threshold. Uh, I mentioned a couple of things. The aircraft's got a turbocharger. The purpose of a turbocharger in an aircraft it's not necessarily the same as it is in a car. They'll both do the same thing, i.e. they squash the air a uh, bit more and they put more air and therefore more fuel into the engine, increases the power, etc. But that's not the fundamental reason for that in an aircraft, is not to go faster uh, because you've got other limitations, pre predominantly to do with the airframe. Um, no, the purpose is to make sure that as you climb, where the air gets thinner and therefore you have less air to mix with your fuel, what you do is you add the turbocharger and by doing so you can increase or you can boost the pressure of the air that's going into the engine. So what it does is it allows you to maintain your performance as you climb. So your, your climb performance and your performance at altitude uh, is better than a non-turbocharged engine. And that's the fundamental reason why you have a turbocharger uh, for a piston single for example or for a, a, a basic piston twin. Um, that's why you have a turbocharger. Uh, quite often they're not um, set so that they have the maximum boost, um, so they might be uh, derated is not the right term, but I can't remember the right term at the moment. Um, but that's why you have a turbocharger, and as a result of that in here, there's an additional light over boost. Um, over boost 
it won't destroy itself. Um, it's got wastegates that will allow the excess uh, pressure to go out, but what you do have to do is modulate your throttle and be very mindful of that. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll take off and we'll see what we think of the handling. The sun is doing my head in. We'll get the first stage of flap down. We'll visually check it. It's got the old uh, car handbrake type lever, which I absolutely love. When I was flying these things, I used to enjoy that just purely out of the fact that it was it was easy to actually sense what flap setting you're on just by reaching down by your leg. It was there, you could tell. As I say, nice and easy ground handling. And then away we go. Introduce the power when you do need a little bit of right rudder. And my setup's a bit twitchy, but as you can see we're away. Nice handling as we bounce along on the ground. We'll rotate at 70. Whoa, it fairly leapt off. Now we're not going to retract the gear at the moment because we've still got available run that we're on way that we can land on. Although we're not over it technically. And we'll bring the gear up now. Gear warning unsafe. And then we'll climb away. Compared to some of the Microsoft Flight Simulator, Flight Simulator aircraft I've played with recently, um, trim in this is so much sweeter, so much sweeter. And as you can see, the aircraft's not static; it's moving around, it's bobbling around. We're not in a particularly windy day, uh, but the aircraft is playing ball. Uh, trims nicely, flies really nicely. So this is hands off at the moment, or the nose is starting to dip. But I would expect it gets to a point where it starts to speed up, and then the nose will lift again, and it'll find its uh, trim position. So in terms of aircraft behaviour, it is exactly what I would expect to see. Let me just come down here. Uh, don't want to change the CDI. I want to change. Do I want to change the CDI? No. I want to get rid of my flight plan. Bosh. There we go. And we're going to come round to the left. And we do need to use our feet in this, which I'm notoriously bad for doing. Um, but we'll bring it round to the left for the start of our legs. And hand flying this thing is lovely. I'll be honest, it's absolutely lovely. If you do any GA av aviation, you'll absolutely adore this aircraft. It just flies like the, the real thing. It's very nice, although my footwork is awful. Come on, Richard, you can do better than that. Um, there is a slight parallax error to it. You'll have noticed it potentially when we're on the ground. Um, so just bear that in mind. But in terms of handling, it's very nice. Absolutely lovely. It does move around. You have to fly the thing. My phone's decided to go bing. Um, so yeah, what we'll do is we'll have a play around with the handling now and see what we think. I'm not going to fly the entire route because the automatics aren't really what this thing's all about. Uh, but we'll bring it up in speed. Make sure that we... Uh, don't exceed our flap limiting speed. Trimmy, trim, trim, trim. Now we're expecting to have slightly less rudder as we accelerate required with the high power setting as we get more airflow over the tail. And what we will do is we'll look at the behaviour with the tail because that's the bit I mentioned was in the prop, prop slipstream. So what we'll do in that case, we'll bring the power right back we use left boot because we're not flying very well today, are we? We'll bring the speed down and aim to do some slow speed flight. And we'll see what the tail feels like. So not particularly slow, we're at 80 knots, but the tail doesn't feel particularly poor. We're going to a descent, that's a gear warning actually to be fair, rather than a, a stall warning. So we'll get ourselves right down to sort of uh, bottom of the green. See what she feels like. Not going to deliberately stall there. But we'll see what she feels like. Still got good uh, pitch control. She's quite quite sensitive she behaves quite sensitive in terms of nature but the roll is certainly a bit more woolly at the bottom of the green we'll put her flaps out 
can see what her behaviour is, bottom of the white. Quite often in a configuration, a, a GA plane won't stall at the bottom of the white or bottom of the green if it's not fully loaded. Those arcs are designed for an aircraft that's fully loaded. But it's very woolly, very wafty. Um, we'll have a quick look at seeing if it's got uh, adverse yaw, which it should have. God, my slip ball. Where? It's off to Canada. Right. So we'll have a quick look. Yeah. It's got really good demonstration of adverse yaw here. So what I'm going to do is try and not fall out of the sky. But if you watch straight ahead, as soon as I roll left, the nose goes right. Don't want us to actually stall. And what I will say is the behaviour of the rate of descent seems uh, accurate to me. Um, the numbers look accurate, the behaviour. So if I turn right, the nose skids out to the left. Really nice. Yeah, and my elevator control is okay for the airspeed. But what I'm going to do now is apply power. And then we'll see what the elevator's like. So we'll pitch up so that we can try and maintain slow speed. But we'll get rid of the flaps. We're accelerating, we don't really want to accelerate, but got high power setting now at slow speed so the elevators the aileron is still quite woolly as you can see but we should have yeah same in terms of pitch no difference which is what would have expected with the t-tail behavior and then in terms of handling it's, you can chuck it around you wouldn't do this for for real really um, She flies beautifully, flies really, really nicely. Got no uh, complaints over that. Flies absolutely beautifully. So what we'll do is we'll take her back towards uh, home and we'll see what we think. Um, as we, we'll do it as we go. So in terms of the exterior modeling, done to a very high standard, very happy with that. Um, there's a couple of areas where the text is just broke down right at the edge of text, uh, but it's nothing that uh, for me is too worrying. I think it's just very nicely done overall. Uh, it's not the most complex of aircraft either in terms of modelling or in terms of performance and behaviour, uh, but it is very nicely done. Um, so I'm very happy with that. In terms of the interior, the cockpit is really lovely. It is really, really well done. So. No real issues there at all. I can just see the airfield off the nose. Um, systems wise, the instrumentation and the systems are all done to a very good standard. If you are a GA pilot, it will feel like putting your slippers on and coming right back home. Very nice indeed. Um, the uh, navigation suite that you get is basically the default for the sim. Um, if I'm honest, I don't see any reason why you would change it. Uh, it works perfectly well. You can add in the GTN 750 should you wish, uh, but the GPS uh, 530 Garmin um, is perfectly adequate in this aircraft. It doesn't take that much to uh, program it. Um, overall, then, in terms of as a package, as I say, £30 and 49 pence, I think it's really good value for money, personally. Uh, it's a very interesting aircraft just to poodle around in. Um, it's got a lot of character to its handling characteristics. You do feel like you're actually flying it. It's not running on rails, um, but it trims out beautifully. And that's my biggest complaint, really, in a lot of aircraft is where the trim is not very realistic. This has got tiny amounts of trim adjustment, but it's fast enough that you can actually... So you can see I'm just making individual tiny blips and it makes a tiny difference to the aircraft. But the rate, if you hold it, is more than adequate and it's smooth. It's not... Um, chunky and massive steps like uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. That's one of my biggest complaints. Well, I've got two big complaints about Microsoft Flight Simulator. The first thing is it doesn't do GA particularly well. Um, I just think it feels a bit sterile. And then the second thing is the trim. I always find that the trim is too notchy or it's not effective enough or it's, not, it's overpowering. Uh, for me, yeah, I'm not overly f a fan of the uh, trim and flight for GA aircraft in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I think if you're, if you're after an actual handling experience, um, 
in terms of what it's like to fly GA, then I don't think you can go far wrong with um, with X-Plane, if I'm honest. Um, this scenery is payware add-on scenery from Orbex, so you can get uh, England North South, uh, UK North South, and uh, Central, and it's basically their VFR scenery. That's very nice. And we're just gonna, you know, what we'll do? We'll kick it right out to the left. And we'll increase our rate of descent with a bit of uh, opposite your and we'll bring it down we're very very high we're very very naughty and we're very very don't really careish I'm gonna go down like a brick now this is not the way to do it But, because you can almost feel the aircraft in a sim, which is really rather weird. I'd love to try this in um, with force feedback. I think this would be an awesome aircraft in force feedback. A little bit of a skip on the ground. So there we have it. So really, uh, the summary is, uh, it's a reasonable price. It's very well modeled 3D and uh, exterior and interior. The systems are very good. Um, the fluidity of things like instruments, very good. Um, I wish you could get the smell of GA because it's very distinctive for those who've flown it, you'll know what I mean. Um, documentation is good. Uh, I think overall it's a very nice package um, for which I am very much enjoying flying it. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to tick like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.